I'd like to introduce you to one of Australia's top professional surfers, Dan Ross. And he's got an interesting story to tell you about what he's been seeing in the oceans around the world. Dan. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting and I guess somewhat disturbing in a way that, um, yeah, like I explained before, some of the places we actually surf around the world, we have to get online first and see how bad the pollution rating is before we can even enter the water and for me it's uh yeah it's something I've never experienced here in Australia where I was growing up and um and I mean yeah like in places like California and, and right near Malibu there one of the most iconic surf spots in the world it's yeah if it rains you cannot even go in the water. And do the surfing fraternity generally like worldwide the ones you've known are they uh, are they as a body lobbying uh, governments and lobbying supposedly responsible organisations about things like that? There's different, there are different movements to, to you know, combat the, the amount of, I guess, ocean outfall and the, and the pollution actually, you know, getting sent out into the ocean. But there's definitely, um, I guess, I mean, not enough people sort of, a lot of people see it for what it is and they understand that what's happening, but... They kind of just go, oh, well, yeah, isn't it sad? It's sort of, and it is sad, but it's kind of, yeah, I mean, there is smaller movements, but it's it's hard for them to actually, you know, build legs and actually get anywhere. But apart from the actual pleasure of, of surfing in pristine water, why do you think we should look after the health of the oceans? Well, there's a number of different, you know, reasons why we should, but... For me, it's it's just to. I mean, every time I hit the ocean and every time I I dive into it, it's just it's like a it's a cleansing feeling that I don't get anywhere else. I don't get it in rock pools. I don't get it in you know swimming pools or anywhere. It's it's something that you, that I experience in the ocean and and all my memories of growing up and spending you know hours and hours of time in the ocean with my friends and and actually you know cherishing that and having having that for my kids is 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 I guess why you know I'm so passionate about looking after it but I mean there's a, a million different reasons why we should be looking after it and I guess one of the one of the biggest things is that it's it's uh, detrimental to our actual livelihood. Yeah. Well it sounds like surfing to you is a spiritual act. It is very much so yeah it's it's um you know as I've as I've grown and as I've grown as a person I've it's become more clear to me how um, how much of a huge part of of my life the ocean is, and and I want that up until you know the day that I'm not here, and I want my kids to experience that, and I want I want you know so many people to to experience that the joy of and that cleanse cleanse sort of cleansiness of of the ocean. Is there an organisation like the uh, World Surfers Organisation? Is there one body? under which everyone sits? There is. It's called the Association of Surfing Professionals, the ASP. And uh, I guess they do, they do a good job of, um, of making sure that the surfers, I guess, are moving forward with, with, um, with events and, and the structure of events and the structure of the tour. But there, there isn't a lot of, um, I guess, environmental... Um, much of an environmental aspect with it and that's where when I was on tour last year I was trying to help create that I mean raise that awareness of of what it is that you know that we do and how our office is right there in the ocean and that's our playground as well and that we really need to look after it and and it's definitely growing some of the, you know a lot of the events are, are turning you know green and getting rid of plastics and the events in Hawaii you know they've they've got rid of single-use plastics as well, and making sure that we, you know, if there's water there, that it is coming from a dispenser, and and that we are conscious of it because we're in the in the eyes of the of millions of viewers who link with that, and and we're setting an example. So it's definitely moving forward, but we um we hope to sort of push it a bit faster. It sounds like as a body, uh, you could lobby the United Nations about that and. Uh get them to look to formulate some sort of policy coming from an august body like surfers because you are literally international aren't you? yeah it is it's 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 fully international and i mean to get the help of someone like that it would be great and and uh i guess it's just a matter of um getting in and doing it 
Do you hold any position on any of those surfing bodies? Um, no, I don't currently, but um, a couple of good friends of mine are representatives for the surfers and and most of the surfers can voice their opinion and that'll, that'll go straight to a, a governing body and and, um, and assess the you know, board meetings and stuff like that. So the, um, the possibility of change is, is, is easily sort of rectified. It sounds like that might be a seed to plant. Definitely. Yeah, we've, we've been pushing it for a while, so yeah. Yep. Uh, anything else you'd like to say in relation to what we can do for the health of the, the oceans? I think what we can do is, um, is, like I said before, is just really try and lead by example and, and every opportunity we get to, to, from, you know, to reduce single-use plastics and, and to, to just create that awareness amongst family members, friends and even communities to, to look after what we have. Pleasure to meet you.